The second the Epic Mickey Rebrush demo was made available on Steam, fans organized to start digging through the game's files to see if there was anything interesting. And I can tell you now that there definitely was. So what we're going to do today is look at the most interesting discoveries that were made while data mining the Epic Mickey Rebrush demo. I'm not going to go super in-depth through most of these because there's so much that I have to show, but I already have some separate videos that go into way more detail if you want to take a deeper dive. Anyway, let's start with something that was on people's minds the day the game was announced, that being costumes. And it turns out that every costume from Epic Mickey 2 will be making a return, even the Sorcerer's Apprentice costume. A few text files were found that shows the name and description for every costume in the game, which happens to just be the same ones for Epic Mickey 2. First is the Brave Little Tailor costume, and the description says, Not for use against giants. Then there's the construction worker costume that says rebuilding wasteland should be no problem now. Next is the firefighter outfit that says wow this costume is red hot. Then the football costume simply says what a score. Next is the sorcerer's apprentice costume and the description reads simply magical just don't get carried away. Then there's the iconic steamboat willy costume which says it doesn't get more vintage than this. And finally we have the default or no costume Mickey which is called pure Mickey and the description fittingly reads Mickey in in his purest form. Along with these names and descriptions, the UI icons for the construction hat and the firefighter hat were found as well. That's all that I have to show for costumes, so let's talk about cutscenes. As you probably know, the Guardian training cutscene was edited to display the rebrushed UI instead of the UI from the original Wii game. But in the cutscenes folder of the game, the unedited cutscene can be found that's exactly the same as the cutscene from the Wii version. But there's actually two more cutscenes from the Wii version that are in the files of the demo too. The first one is the established Oswald cutscene, which is normally seen in Mickey Junk Mountain. This cutscene was probably included because the file name from the Wii game had it mistakenly labeled as GV, or Gremlin Village. In fact, all of the cutscene's file names in the demo are the exact same as the ones from the Wii version. So it would seem that from there, the developers just threw all the cutscenes labeled Gremlin Village into the files of the demo. And the same could be said for the Blot Grabs Mickey cutscene, which is normally only seen in Duck Beauty Castle Visit 2, and is actually the last 2D cutscene in the game. This cutscene is also in the files of the demo, likely for for the same reason that I just talked about. But there's one more cutscene that was discovered in the game's files and it doesn't come from the original Wii version. It turns out that a short 5 second video was used as a placeholder for cutscenes that might not have been finished or implemented into the game yet. It comes complete with the Rerush logo in the corner too. Now let's move on and take a look at some textures that are actually from the original Wii version. We have a texture for one of the generic pirate NPCs and a texture for the bunny children. It's possible that the developers used assets from from the Wii version as placeholders during development, or it's also possible that some Wii files just happened to accidentally make their way into the files of the demo during development even though they were never used. Let's take a look at some UI icons. Something that was missing from the demo was photo mode, even though photo mode was shown off in one of the leaks after the game was announced. But even though photo mode didn't get a chance to shine in the demo, there are still some references to it in the files. A UI icon was found in the files, and by putting some pieces together, data miners were able to conclude that this icon is going to be used for a filter pack that can be purchased from the ice cream parlor in Mean Street. On top of that, there are some basic UI elements for photo mode like the crosshair. Aside from this, there are a ton of brand new icons for pretty much every NPC in the game. To be honest, I'm not sure how much I like these, but I have hope that they'll look good in-game. Anyway, there's also a ton of icons for quests and some items that you can pick up throughout Wasteland. Some of these icons include the broken bell pieces for the bell and bog easy, Lewis's badge of courage, which is also purple now for some reason, and Small Pete's ship log. One of the more popular discoveries was the concept art. Because the demo allows you to see small previews of the concept art in the menus, we now have low quality versions of every single piece of concept art in the game. A text file was also found that contains the name and description for all of them as well. Alongside the previews for concept art, we can also find the previews for every cutscene in the game. This isn't too groundbreaking because the 2D cutscenes are just the same as they were in the Wii version. But there is something I wanted to point out. In the preview image for the ending cutscene, you can see something in the top right. I thought this was interesting because this might be a piece of debug UI that ended up getting cropped out. But that's not all because in the preview image for the training film screen cutscene, you can see a video scrubber at the very bottom. And it turns out that this video scrubber is 
is actually from a program called Rad Tools, which is the program that was used to convert the cutscenes into the unique file format that they're in. We also have some map icons for every level in the game. Just by looking at these, we can determine that these are going to be in the top right corner of the map menu, and they show an ink blob with a piece of concept that are relevant to the current area inside it. Pretty cool stuff. Now let's move on to models. Left over in the game's files are some models of characters that don't actually appear in the demo. First we have the Sweeper. The Sweeper came so close to appearing in the demo, but unfortunately the demo ends right before Mickey faces the first Sweeper. We also have some pictures of the Sweeper with the painted in texture and the thinned out texture. Right after the Jungle Boat ride is when Mickey meets Small Pete, and his model is in the files of the demo too. And finally we have the model for the bunny children, and I'll be honest, they look kinda creepy. Aside from character models, we can also see the models for all three sketches in the game, those being the TV sketch, the watch sketch, and the anvil sketch. Two of the bosses in the game are mentioned in the files of the demo too. The first one is the clock tower, and one of his textures is here in full 4K quality, which also comes with a normal map and an ORM map. And the other boss mentioned is Petronic, who only comes with a couple of scripts related to his boss fight. So nothing like textures or models that we can really look at, unfortunately. One quick thing is that there's a texture for a purple e-ticket in the files, even though purple e-tickets have never been seen in the entire Epic Mickey franchise before. Maybe this one will be worth 30 tickets instead of the green ticket, which is now worth 10 tickets. Real quick, I wanted to mention the localization file. The localization file is interesting because it actually contains every single piece of text and dialogue from the full game, not just from the demo. We can see character dialogue, titles and descriptions for things you can buy in shops, and everything else you can think of. There's also a few files that contains the titles and descriptions for every achievement that's going to be in the final game. I already did a few full videos about these files, so if you want to learn more about the achievements then you can check those out. Let's move on to the sound department. Just like the localization file, it turns out that pretty much every sound effect and song from the full game is in here. They're all organized into different banks, which are basically just containers for sound effects. There's banks for every enemy, every level, and every NPC, as well as a few banks for some menu stuff. There's a bank in here called testsounds.bank, but unfortunately I wasn't able to open it. However, there's a few other banks that are super cool. One bank that sticks out is AIW.bank, which stands for Alice in Wonderland. So this bank file was for the Wonderland area that was eventually scrapped at some point in development. In this bank, we can listen to an early combat theme and two early exploration themes, as well as a short song titled Caterpillar Loop 001. There's also an ambient track and a couple of other sound effects in here. On top of all this, there's another bank called Caterpillar.bank that was also going to be used for the scrapped Wonderland area. There's only six sound effects at this one, and for some reason, a sound effect for Cage Gremlins. There's also two stray Wonderland sounds in the Mickey.bank file. <coughs> At one point Mickey was going to eat a mushroom and shrink down, and these sounds were probably meant for that scene. Also in the Mickey Dub Bank file, some of the sound effects are titled Scary Stuff or Scary Voice, so I thought that was worth mentioning. Anyway, back to more Wonderland stuff. There's a few text files that mention quests that you would receive in Wonderland. There are quests called Defeat Caterpillar, Find the Keys, and Chase Oswald. We already saw the sounds for the Caterpillar character in the Caterpillar.bank file, and going off of this text file, it seems like the Caterpillar was going to be a boss that you'd have to fight in Wonderland. The Find the Keys quest is pretty self-explanatory. It sounds like in order to catch up to Oswald, you would have to find a few keys to unlock an arena that Oswald locked himself in. And finally, for the Chase Oswald quest, I think Oswald was actually used as a placeholder character, and you would have chased the rabbit from the Alice in Wonderland movie instead. Most of the references to the character you're supposed to be chasing are just the rabbit, rather than directly referring to Oswald by name. That about wraps up the Wonderland stuff I wanted to show. I decided to save this next discovery for last because, well, it's pretty funny. Alongside all of Mickey's animations is a short animation of Mickey shaking his butt, which is already pretty weird in itself, but there might be an explanation for why this is in the files of the demo. It turns out that this animation was made way earlier for the original Epic Mickey. The lead animator for Epic Mickey one was named Jorma Auburn, and on his website he has a short video showing off some test animations for Mickey. And in this video is the same exact animation of Mickey throwing it back. So it's possible that all of Mickey's animations from EM1, including animations that were never seen in the final game, were simply just ported over to Rebrush and the twerking animation made its way in with the rest. 
That seems like an appropriate way to end things. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I have other data mining videos on my channel, and if I find enough time for myself, then I'll try to get around to making even more in-depth data mining videos. To make sure you don't miss out on future videos, subscribe to my channel and like the video, and join the Discord server with the link in the description. I'll see all you guys around.